Welcome everybody, it's Brittany K. Jackson and I have the beautiful Milan Zelli here with me. Uh, she's a phenomenal journalist, publicist, and more importantly, producer. So um, I want to get right into it and I want to know from you, how did you become known as the Olivia Pope of entertainment? I mean, that in itself sounds very, very interesting. So I want to know more about that. And it is, I laugh every time I, I hear it, but I think it's because um, people are always calling me all day everything for pretty much anything entertainment related. I mean, I'll get calls all day starting with, you know, I need a publicist or I need a manager to, I need a camera operator to, you know, I need, I don't know, concert tickets or a liquor sponsor, you know, yeah. whatever it is, um, anything entertainment related, I can do. I'm, I'm your go-to girl. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so so essentially it makes you a connector. Yes. Someone who absolutely. connects people. To people. Absolutely. Okay, and so how did you kind of come into that vein, um, or when did you first discover that that was uh, something that was a gift of yours? Um, I think it was while well, I was getting my degree at Howard. Mm -hmm. um, I was a journalism major with a concentration in PR, and what I learned, um, and I had a PR company for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I ended up selling my shares in the company because what I figured out was I loved the 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 connecting piece of it and the networking piece of it mm -hmm. um, and the logistical and the business side of it. Mm -hmm. um, but two things happened. One, I wasn't so fond of you know the writing of the press releases just because I'm not able to be as creative as I would like to be. Right. Um, and then I stepped away, interestingly enough, from PR because I got tired of explaining to people the need as it relates to cost. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now I do that as a producer. Yeah. You know, just explaining to people like, I know you understand the vision, but I need you to further understand and invest in the process. And that's what I was just yeah. going to say, because a lot of people don't understand that right. PR is a process. You got to yeah. kind of be in it yeah. for not just the moment, but for a certain period of time. Period. And, and yeah. the same with production and when you're when you're making television and you're making film, I always um, talk about it like like you're having a baby. Yeah. You know, because you're with it from the point of its conception, you know, to the the point where you you give it to the world, mm -hmm. and and it's your baby, and and it's you know how it comes out is based on you know how you nurture it and how you care for it, and you know it's yours, and and you love it, and you're sensitive about it, and you you know you hope the world loves it too. Yeah. 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 And just a little bit more about the transition from your PR company to becoming a producer. Um, for you, how did you know that it was time to, to transition and then to continue to elevate in your career? Um, so for me, the moment I knew I wanted to be a producer, I was watching an episode of Project Greenlight. Um, and I tell this story all the time. But um, so there was a conversation between Matt Damon and Effie Brown. And Matt Damon basically went on to say that there did not need to be diversity behind the camera mm -hmm. in order to tell the story of diversity in front of the camera. Wow. Um, yeah. Which so, we know is not true. Not true. Yeah. At all. Um, so that was a monumental moment for me. Um, and, you know, because I was saddened. Not because he said it, but because I understood that that was how the majority of the world felt, mm -hmm. you know, and that was very evident and very prevalent based on a lot of the media that was, you know, being put out and disseminated. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the moment where I was like, PR is cool, but I believe that it is my God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. um, much like a lot of the content creators that, you know, have come before me. I mean, the Avas and the yeah. Maras and the Shondas yeah. and the Isas and the Ginas, mm -hmm. you know, to, to use my art as a, as a form of activism. Exactly, yeah. And really help, um, race relations right yeah, yeah. That, and that's very important to have you you know and, and us behind the scenes so that we can kind of guide the narrative um to show those stories that absolutely the most to us yeah absolutely um i feel like hmm i feel like our our stories for a long time have been told mm -hmm. and you know we'll take something such as slavery because it's easy race right? easy yeah. happy those, those stories are being told, and I'm not saying they're not accurate in, you know, the, the years mm -hmm. or, you know, what happened, but what's not always true is our perspective, yeah. how we felt about it, how, how, how we want those stories being told, how we want them being remembered, right. um, what participation we want to portray, you know, as our, 
you know, a activation or activism with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what's really important. I want to talk about Genius Talks. Uh, oh, right into sense. production. Yeah, I've gotten yeah. the opportunity to, to witness a couple of the Genius Talks over the years. Yeah. Um, and such phenomenal conversations. Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, I, I think I was at the one with Mayweather and okay, and so I think that was I think years, that was two thousand fifteen. Yeah, think. yeah. I yeah. think if I'm remembering because I'm getting old stuff. So, <laughs> you know, forgive me. <laughs> um. So tell me about the behind the scenes production of Genius Talks and your role as associate producer and what goes into crafting those conversations. Um. So first of all, I have to say Genius Talks is my absolute favorite um, activation in the BT experience. Um, and you know, I was with BT for four years, so you know, over that time I worked on a couple of different activations, um, particularly when it came to the BT experience. But mm -hmm. Genius Talks is my absolute favorite, and it's because it's the only activation that really combines the elements of entertainment mm -hmm. with the knowledge. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we do to really um, craft a really good production there um, is, is the quality and the integrity of the questions that are being asked. Mm -hmm. It's very limiting when we get the platforms to be able to have those sort of conversations. Yeah. So when we did, we wanted to make sure that we were asking the questions that we don't typically get asked, but we knew needed, needed to be answered. Right, yeah. Um, so in order to do that, um, we got uh, Shalman God, who of course is the king of asking, <laughs> you know, all the off the wall questions. Yes, and yes. He did a phenomenal job. Um, and we had we had some really great talent, but my absolute favorite, um, and I think of course the talent plays a part in making it what it is, um, was we had Issa Rae, yeah. Ava DuVernay, and Tracy Ellis Ross. Right, so yeah. It's like, all three of them are like my, they're friends, you know you have those friends in your head? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Y'all know me yet, but we gonna be real <laughs> Y'all know me yet, but you will know me, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, three of my absolute favorite, favorite women. In, in this field, in this industry, and so we got to sit down and have some really amazing conversations with them, and just a lot of the things that they shared um, were life changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's dope. That's dope. Um. Uh. So okay, what, when you, when it comes to producing your own projects, mm -hmm. uh, what do you find it most compelling to address as far as social issues? Oh, I mean, anything that has to do with the reality of the black experience in America. Mm -hmm. um, I think that those stories, again, are being told with little or no concern to the truth. Yeah. Um, so for me, anytime I'm going to spend my time, my energy, my resources, my finances. Right. Um, Say that again, my finances, finances okay? <laughs> you know, cost, cost a few pretty pennies, um, you know. And, and, and put my name behind anything, you know, for the world, it's it's going to be something that's going to positively impact the way that we're perceived so that ultimately my art is being used to help progress race relations. Yeah, yeah. And I saw one of the projects um, that you worked on was with Kenny Lattimore. Okay, yeah. I love Kenny Lattimore. How yeah. was that? That was fun. I love Kenny. Um, really, really sweet guy. Uh, and of course, talented artist. Um, and yeah, that was a music video mm -hmm. that I did for him, which I do do. Mm -hmm. I've done a whole host of music videos. Um, one of my favorites, uh, I did a executive producer produce a, a video for uh, Teacher Campbell Martin. Yeah, I saw that also. Yeah, so I and I love doing music videos. There's definitely um, a check there, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say it's like the ones that I like focus on. Like they come yeah. up and I'm asked to do it. Yeah. I love doing them. Um, you know, they're usually fairly quick, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say that's like the the ultimate goal, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So speaking of which, okay. the ultimate goal, um, I know that you have this phenomenal initiative, Changing the Narrative. Yes. So I'd like to know um, more about that. So Changing the Narrative is an initiative and a campaign um, that is meant to inspire people to really raise the status of our culture mm -hmm. through art and media cultivation. Um, I really want to encourage artists and content creators to create their own content, tell their own stories, uh, just live in their own magic and ultimately do the dispersion of their art, determine their own legacies. Yeah, yeah. And that's obviously very important, you know, um, I get a lot of artists who come through here, actors and creators, um, 
and and it's so important you know that we are behind the scenes doing those things right. so what advice um, would you have for up-and-coming producers or um, creatives behind the scenes looking to put their stamp on their own projects and be the Issa Rays of the world? Oh wow, there's so much. Um, I would say one of the most important things to realize mm -hmm. is that quality is coming quality is coming back into trend, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, What's been happening, in my opinion, over the last couple of years is that there's been this saturation of content. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm all for taking whatever resources you have and, and making things happen. Mm -hmm. So that means you have a light ring and an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Cool. By all means, make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my, my suggestion or advice would just be very careful mm -hmm about what it is that you're putting out and what you're putting your name on and what you're standing behind and you know it's it's cool when you can do these like one minute instagram videos and that doesn't necessarily make you a director or a producer right, yeah necessarily mm -hmm. you know what i mean and just and just really taking the time to learn the business of the craft mm -hmm. because there's a business behind the art as well that is so key and it's and it's it's key to have that to really be impactful yeah yeah so yeah. being selective and not getting caught up in the you know the creativity part because that's what a lot of artists do they're like i just want to be creative i just want to be creative yeah. and then you completely forget that there's a business aspect right. and, and and not everybody is meant to participate in the business aspect of it some right. people are solely artists and that's mm -hmm. fine but then understand that you need a team yeah of people you know what i'm saying it's not just it's it's so dynamic now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't just be one or the other. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to, to delegate that. Exactly. Way. What has been your most interesting challenge or opportunity uh, thus far in, in your career? Oh challenges. <laughs> um, that's a loaded question. There's so many. Um, I would say one of the biggest challenges, um, and I kinda of touched on this earlier, is not just getting people to see the vision. Mm -hmm but to invest in the process. Yeah. Um, now, I'm, I'm pretty well known for being able to take a smaller budget and make it look like it's a lot larger. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely one of my specialties as a producer. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still something to be said for respecting the experience and the quality that certain people and certain production and production companies mm -hmm. are able to bring to the table. Right. Um, you can't you can't bring me five hundred dollars and say, "Well, I don't want you to produce an award-winning short." Wow. Yeah. You know, so you it's just about understanding. I think one of the challenges is definitely just understanding everything that goes into truly creating impactful art. Um, outside of that, I would say maybe managing a personality. Yeah. You have to realize when you're on set, you're not only dealing with talent, but you're also dealing with crew, and everybody in some way, shape, or form is an artist. Yeah. And so they all have their own subjective opinion, you know, on what's happening, what's being created, how it's being created. Um, you know, of course, there's something to be said for being the boss and being able to kind of have the final say so. Yeah. Um, but you're still managing personalities. And then with actors, you know, they already have typically very large personalities, and then they're embodying and playing a whole other personality. Right. So with that one person alone, you're dealing with two or three people at any given moment. Right. Um, and as a producer, part of my job is to manage the management of personnel and, and, and personalities and that of course can be challenging as well yeah yeah now as a woman as a woman of color have you ever faced any adversity um you know in the boardroom or have you ever experienced any situation where you felt like wow i'm the only woman here and i'm being singled out for it as opposed to just being a boss um yes and no mm -hmm. um i've absolutely faced adversity as a woman of course, 100%. Um, as a black woman, not so much. And that's because um, when I was working in corporate, you know, I was I was working at BET. I was at BET for four years. So I was in a place where, of course, being black was celebrated. Um, but of course, I'm not naive to the fact that that happens. And so because of those barriers and because of those sessions of, you know, limitations that do exist, I've opted to create and operate under my own production company mm -hmm. um, so that ultimately 
you know, I can be my only adversary. Yeah, that's so true. What is the next phase for your company, for your career? Um, what do you see in your vision? Absolutely. Um, well, as it relates to the company, and I actually haven't um, announced this yet, so I guess I'll give you guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me, let me, let me cut this off. Let me cut this all the way off. <laughs> so, I think we have an exclusive here, y'all. Something like that. Um, like I said, I haven't actually publicly announced it at all yet, and I'm kind of just figuring out the the, the way in which I want to. Yeah. Um, but very soon, I'm going to be doing a call for content. Okay. Um, where I'll be looking for other writers and creators to um, kind of just send me what they have and I'll be selecting the next uh, piece of production coming out of Lonnie Land Productions. Nice. Um, yeah, I gotta, you know, just secure a little bit of a budget. Hey! A little budget. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not 100% sure of what, what story I want to be told. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable enough in saying that I'm not even sure if I have the best answer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know I have the ability to do it, and of course I have, you know, a plethora of stories that I like to tell. Yeah. And and sh and things I'd like to shoot one day. Um, and and they they range. Mm -hmm. Um. So Jada Pinkett Smith, she owns the rights to uh, the coldest winter ever. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite books, yeah. um, and I've always wanted to see that go from script to screen. Yeah. So you know, I'd love to do that project, and you know, so there's there's a number of projects, but um, I was really blessed when I came into this budget, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that I'm doing what God wants me to do and has in store for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open up a call for content. So anybody who has any content, um, look out for the the marketing on that, because um, I feel like the story that needs to be told now with that budget may still be out there and I just want to give um, everybody an equal opportunity. That is so wonderful yeah. and I can see you <laughs> just lighting up. I mean you're uh, just I'm glowing. So yeah, I'm, that's I'm phenomenal. I'm so excited about um, not only the opportunity but just to have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. You know there's so many great creators with so many great stories so to say hey I'm going to be able to take somebody's art and, and, and help come, you know, make it in, into fruition and, yeah. and the natural project is, is exciting. Like that's, that is what's next for me, um, career wise. I, I just, yeah, I'm excited. I don't even know how to explain it. Like I'm just, I'm just excited. Like that is, I feel like that is, um, part of the call in my life and I'm happy to be able to fulfill that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I was just, you know, um, telling someone, you know, whether you decide to answer the call or not, it's still going to be there. So you might as well right. answer it. You know? Right. And that's good that you've answered the call and that you're working in the call and, and doing the work. Right. And, you know, there's a, so there's a few other projects that we have coming out. Um, we just finished our last short. Um, so that's going into post and that'll be coming out soon. Um, and then, of course, the change in the narrative campaign. I'm really excited about we have some apparel and some other things coming out alongside that. So, yeah, that's what's to come. Yes, that is so wonderful. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank to you, you on all the wonderful things that you are doing. Thank you. Um, we can't wait to see the Changing the Narrative campaign, yes. you know, um, all the wonderful things to come with your production company. Yeah. And and just seeing you shine so and thank you so much for for sharing with us at the sentinel thank you for having me I'm, yeah i'm excited to be here um i think this this publication is really dope so yeah. i'm glad that you guys have me yeah thank you so much <laughs> no problem. um so where can we stay in touch with you where can we follow you um so you can definitely um, of course follow me on instagram you can probably get me on instagram before you can get me anywhere else which is kind of sad but Welcome to 2018. Yes. <laughs> um, at um, Miss Milan Zoe, so it's M I S S M I L A N Z O E, um, and everything else is pretty much on my website, which is just milanzoe.com. Wonderful. Yeah. 